So we've got a couple of hundred still standing veterans. Many of you guys showed up with your cool I'm a veteran hat. Well, we got something cooler for you now. It's called a Patriot Club hat. So wear that with pride. That's right. I heard you get free beer with those hats too. That's right. Free beer to them. Thank you so much, especially the Vietnam veterans. I hope that my service pays back for your sacrifice in Vietnam. So thank you again. For I think most of you guys know my story, but I want to just tell you real fast. You know, in 1975, we left Vietnam with nothing. We, my mom was sewing notes in our clothes, saying, "Is my child? Please take care of her." Um, and we didn't know what, what was waiting for us. But that's the first time I, I tasted American generosity. So this, um, this family of nine took our family of seven in. And I want to recognize them tonight. Mike Fitzgerald, stand up, please. So Mike. <laughs> Mike's mom and dad, Ray and Helen, uh, passed on already. Uh, took care of us, took us into this country, and, and just gave us a home. And Mike, I remember as a, uh, as a kid, Mike would drive around, and his dad would call for his fancy car. Fancy man with fancy car. Mike had a big Cadillac, you know, convertible, and uh, it was great because he'd take us buying ice cream and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, we never tasted that before. So thank you so much, Mike, for just being the big brother I never had. The only place where my dad could find work. So we moved to Africa and we lived there for seven years. And uh, I only spoke French at school and, and Vietnamese at home. And, uh, you know, so my parents had to make another hard decision that my mom had to leave Africa with all of us, all five of us, and my dad would remain there for another 15 years, so seeing us only every uh, six months. But that's what sacrifice is, right? You do that for your kids. So I came back here and I grabbed down to all the opportunities this country gave us. I went to Thomas Jefferson High School for Science and Technology. I was a first class graduate from there. I went to the United States Naval Academy. I got my bachelor's in ocean engineering. And I went to Naval Postgraduate School where I earned a master's in physics. Then I went to Harvard and MIT. But I paid back everything this country gave me through my services to this nation. Somebody's got to pay for it. So you have to do it yourself too. You have to pay back everything you get or you pay for. And uh, you know, in my last deployment in Iraq, something, something hard happened. You know, just watching mothers hand babies to, to Marines at the end of the, my deployment, it broke my heart. It's almost like in Vietnam when, when you know, mothers were desperate parents were handing their babies to to American soldiers to, to take care of them. And that's not what we do. We take care of people that, that work with us. The way Mike's family took care of us. So I brought out 162 Afghans after we left them behind in September until last uh, summer. Me and a group of people did that because our government failed them. Yes. They failed. And they still fail. And you wonder why, right? Why is it that they, they failed? And I think the answer is they forgot their oath of office. The oath of all those that stood up, we all took the same oath, right? To support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That we will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That we will and faithfully discharge the duties of the office in which we will to enter, so help us God. That is the oath of office. It's not to any king, it's not to any president, and certainly not to any political party. It's to the Constitution of the United States. It's to we the people. And that's what they forgot. They forgot who they worked for. They worked for we the people. Right. Let's break down the Constitution. In order to form a more perfect union, what have they done? They tear us apart. Yep. They turn us man against woman, black versus white, gay versus straight, breakfast tacos against fried wontons. I mean, you name it. Right? <laughs> 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 just, justice 
they defund the police. Yeah. We used to have 800,000 law enforcement officers in this country, and now we're down to 700,000. <laughs> in Fairfax County alone, we're down 200 officers. 200 officers. That means somebody else has to take on their shift. That means officers are working up to 16 hour days in order to make up for that. Insure, instead of ensuring domestic tranquility, what do they do? They burn cities and cause riots. Yeah. Instead of prov providing for common defense, they break down our military with woke training. Yeah. Yeah. Now what we do is we train to put range, uh, rounds down range, but instead they're teaching about pronouns and what the you know, source of white rage is. And that's not how the military works. Because we don't see color. We see shades of green or shades of blue. That's what we see. That's right. Instead of ensuring domestic tranquility, they invest in things like the Green New Deal, things that will bankrupt our country. And instead of securing the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity, they trample on our first and second amendment rights, and that doesn't go anymore. That's, that ends now. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, there's a new, there's a new class coming in, and it's full of veterans, and we've said enough. Enough is enough. Amen. That's right. Because you need to ask yourselves this question tonight, and ask your neighbors these questions too. Do you feel safer now than you did two years ago? No. no. Are we thriving? No. Are we more financially secure? No. Are you excited for your kids' no. future? No. Are we more united? No. no. You have Joe Biden standing in front of Independence Hall, calling those who did not vote for him domestic terrorists. Threats to democracy, that's what he used. Yep. Threats to democracy. And instead of saying, with all due respect, Mr. President, you're wrong, Jennifer Wexton didn't do that. She should have said, Mr. President, just because they don't agree with our politics doesn't make them domestic terrorists. They're good, hardworking Americans. They're firefighters. They're law enforcement officers. They're medical specialists. They're farmers. They're teachers. They are the bread and butter of this country. They're the cross of America. But she didn't do that. Instead, she doubled down. She doubled down this week in, in her uh, debate with me and called me an extremist. Oh my God. That is the word we use for terrorists. <clears throat> I came to this country with nothing. I fought for everything. I fought and bled for this country. I'm a father of five. I'm a husband of 23 years. And I've fought for this country. And she calls me the same name she calls the terrorist. Yeah. What do you think she calls all of us when we don't agree with her politics? Yeah. Behind our backs, what do, what do you think she calls us? Terrorist. Fascist. You deserve better. You deserve a lot better than Jennifer Wexton. Amen. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, this race is very critical. And I know we hear that every year, but now our liberty is at, at stake here. You deserve someone that will be out there listening to you regardless of whether or not you, you voted for them. There's a saying in force reconnaissance, I'm never above you, never below you, always beside you. That's why you don't always find me, beside you. I'll always be there by your side. Thank you so much. My name is Hong Kong.